Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are finally gonna lift Chris's Jeep. He has some big old tires on there so he can barely drive it. And I still have my two and a half inch lift from my previous setup. So we're gonna go ahead and throw them on. That way we get some more clearance. Typically I say don't buy these new. I mean, if you can pick them up used and cheap, do that. But for like 50 to $100 more, you could get a spring lift kit instead of pucks. And that's way better for the Jeep since the springs are probably sagging on these, you know, almost 20 year old Jeeps. So that's... Fine. 21. That's why I recommend spring lifts over pucks, but I already have these so we're gonna go ahead and throw them on for now Lifting it up from the control arm each side lift it up from there that we get the most height out of it Put jack stands on the body side over here and that way the axle droops as well And you want to lift up both sides to so have the full front end lift it up in the air so that the axle actually drops You want to do either the front first or the rear first don't lift up the whole Jeep Okay, so this is what we got going on here. It looks like the brake pads are pretty low, so we might go get some right now. But the first things first, we're going to spray WD-40 on every single one of these bolts. So what we're going to want to take off is the shock. Take it off at the bottom there, and then disconnect the sway bar. And that should give us enough leverage to be able to take the spring out. Leverage? Is that the right word? I don't know. But we're going to do the same thing on both sides, and I would say clean up this area too. Because it's pretty dirty. So if yours is dirty, clean it up. Hopefully we don't have any rust under here. Wait. We should be good. Alright, so Chris is going to spray on some super clean. Uh, yeah, just like all the dirt in here. Might as well. So this Jeep actually came from Minnesota. And as you can see, the bolts are pretty rusty. So WD-40 is going to be our friend. I want you guys to see something pretty interesting. So the front axle over here, it has the Rezepa type joint at the axle too. So eventually we're going to have to change out the pinion. Is that what it's called? The yoke for the pinion? So we're going to have to replace that eventually. But for now, send it. First thing we're going to tackle is this rusty sway bar link. Try to loosen her up. Oh, go. Can you? No. No, let me go again. Easy. So we got the sway bar link off on both sides. I can't even twist it, it has good bushings. So now the next step is to remove the shock and we should have enough play to be able to bring the axle down. Oh, and we just found something too. So Chris actually bought these Fox shocks, but they're a little bit too long. They might work, we'll check, but I actually found the Bilsteins that I used to have before and these are still good. So these we're gonna put on the front and then we're gonna see which one of these will fit on the rear. The longer ones are the ones that I said uh, should go on the rear since this is a two and a half inch lift we might use the front ones and just cut off the sides right here we have to cut them off anyway so we'll see what works best so we're gonna take off the spring and it's already pretty much coming out i think i could take it out actually but yeah there it is let's see how it looks like under here it's actually not bad for a jeep from the north so a little bit of rust nothing bad definitely want to clean up all the rust under here and probably put a coat of paint so it doesn't keep rusting i recommend changing these out but these actually look pretty decent for the jeep so we're gonna keep these all right so we got the spring out and we got the bottom part primed up that way it doesn't rust anymore so one thing you got to make sure is the little pin type of thing on there match it up with the hole right here so that it lines up and then make sure the spring is aligned correctly so now on the spacer itself it goes on the top part on the front and on the bottom on the rear so on the top Pad. the spring the rubber and then the spacer so let's go ahead and put it in we're gonna try to do it without the coil compressors but we'll see right now if we can or can't so i'm gonna step on it put some in more yeah more more that's all they got so we're like gonna so we do have to use the coal compressors yeah so i have these linked down below i got these on amazon they're pretty cheap and they work well i've used them multiple times so let's go ahead and put these on and we should be good after that and if you're having an issue putting the spring on the rubber pad i recommend doing some wd-40 on there so we got the coil compressors you want to try to get them as like opposite to each other as possible 180 i guess 180 degrees Tighten, tighten them up and it should compress the coil that way we can get the spacer on there be careful with this part i would say take it to a mechanic if you don't know what you're doing because this is not safe all right so we got it in it took a little bit maybe like an inch of compression so now we're going to take them off and go ahead and do the other side great <laughs> we're going to take off the jack from that side and put it on this side to give us more leverage on the other side if that makes any sense. Safety number one priority. All right, so we got this side done as well. So the next step is to put on the Bilsteins in the front, and then we can put the sway bar links back in and the wheels and all that, and we'll be able to put it on the ground. We ended up putting the new Bilsteins in, and now we're putting the sway bar links back on. These aren't extended, these are the stock ones. 
two and a half inch lift you should but it'll be fine so everything's good to go in the front now it's time to put on the wheels and see what it looks like still revs still revs <laughs> Now that we finished the front, it's time to move on to the rear. So same thing, we're going to lift it up. We're going to put on jack stands and get started. Same thing, remove the shock, the sway bar uh, links. All right, so we got the other side lifted uh, with the jack. And as you can see, the spring's pretty much falling out. This, the back does need new uh, coil isolators, but for now, we're just going to send it. So, Chris, go ahead and put it on. Wait, why is it like this? I don't know, don't worry about it. I'm worried. That one goes on the bottom on the rear. This one? Yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Uh, so on the isolator for the bottom, we have to cut off that little piece that sticks. That little piece we have to cut out, so that way it sits on top of the puck. Pretty much it. Just put the on the rear. The spacer goes on the bottom. On the front, it goes on the top, and just pretty much put the spring in. And it should just fit without even having to use the coal compressors. Nice. So I forgot to show, but we actually put Fox shocks on here. These are the Rubicon from the Gladiator, and these are actually meant for the front, but the rear ones were too long, so we put the front ones back here, and those fit perfectly. But I mean, there it is. It's actually lifted now. We'll get some better shots in the dirt. There we go. Now he'll be able to turn. <laughs> and up here, we put in the Bilsteins, like I said, so you can see the spacer there. Since the uh, springs are stock, the front end does sit down a little bit, but that's just normal because of wear. I think you can see it more here because we're at an angle down. So once we get on flat ground, we'll be able to tell for sure. All right, so here it is. We're about to take it off road so we can test it out. Sorry for the wind, but it's lifted. Definitely, you can tell. So yeah, they're both lifted now. That's crazy. We haven't even owned it a month, I don't think. All right, so Chris is gonna test it out. This is the spot that I use to like flex test. So I don't think it'll have that much because of the big wheels, but let's see how much it rubs. Go. Oh, stop. So that wheel's lifted. Definitely tucking back here. We still need more lift. <laughs> what? No, we need more lift for sure. Yeah. But it's decent. The rear on the that side is in there. Yeah, Alright. Send it. You're good. We're gonna have to take off the mud flaps for now. Until we lift a little bit more, but dude, not bad. It not made bad. it through. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. And he has the new radio in here. Check it out. We're going through the sand like nothing. How do you feel? Feels good. Feels good. Feels good. <laughs> New wheels and everything. Damn. Freaking Chris. <laughs> we just lifted it. <laughs> Put your window up. What are you doing? Alright guys, so that'll be it for today's video. Make sure to check out Nodra Off-Road. Pick up a Chris's Garage shirt to help support his build. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.